Nine, one fifty eight, one fifty seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This transmission temperature runs way too hot. And I know this because I had a 20, 21, 22, and now a 23 3.0 Duramax Silverado right here with the 10L80. I love the 10L80 transmission, but this one, it ran 210 degrees all of the time. So I knew something wasn't right about that, especially when it was 30 degrees ambient. My prior trucks were all 160, 170 after installing the PP transmission cooler, which this truck has, and that only dropped me to 199. So while it did make a difference for me, it wasn't enough. So with the help of top-down thermal imaging, as well as PP providing a bypass valve for me to throw into this thing, we were able to check our temperatures going into the transmission cooler. When did it open up the thermal bypass valve factory? And then what temperatures were we seeing afterwards? The thermal imaging was super cool. It allowed me to break down the full transmission cooling system. And then that's where I learned the LM2 is very much different from the LZ0. So this, was, this is packed. Let's get into the installation of this. This is it. Finally, the transmission fluid thermal bypass block is going onto my truck. It's a 23. Now, I believe uh, this opens up at 194 degrees from the factory, and this one is straight flow through. This side is straight flow through. This side as well, but you see that hole starts there and ends there, so it kind of moves inside there. In addition, there's a little plug in there, and that is magnetic, and they suggest you clean that out every 10,000 miles, which is pretty cool. Clean it up of uh, all the debris that's in there. Now, what I'm going to do before I install this is I want to see what the temperatures are on the factory thermal bypass valve, and what I'm going to do is use this top-down thermal imaging camera. This, uh, this version is for the Apple phones, iOS. And I have an extension cable here, which all this, all the links will be in the description. But they also make it for Android, which is the one that they sent me. However, I am Apple. So I went ahead and bought this thermal imaging camera to work with my iPhone. And this thing is going to be sweet because we're going to get to see when that actual bypass valve opens up on the truck. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting things up to temperature now. All right, you can see my hand in front of it right now. This is the cooler, so this blue portion right here is the cooler. The backside where you see over here that's red, that's going to be the radiator. So hopefully when this thing opens up, we see color temperatures like this flowing through. Now it shows only 67 degrees in there. I'm going to hop in the truck and take my little GoPro with me and we'll kind of watch what's going on inside there. showing a temperature of 102 on the dash. So we still haven't matched there. Giving it a minute to idle and we're gonna give it another rev. I am allowed to run, uh, stall the converter for 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is wrap that up. You can go up to 1500 RPMs, no higher. 10 seconds only, no longer. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that, try to bring it up to temperature. degrees on there again for reference here is my hand 87 degrees because the I could feel the radiator is warm so that's where that heat is coming off of right there I'm going to check the trans temp on the gauge 127 so we got about 70 more degrees to go before this thing opens up 129 is the trans temp 171 is the engine coolant temp it's my hand you can see we are warming up the highest is 105 so that's going to be getting that reading from the radiator back there on the very bottom. Alright, we are up to 153 trans, 183 engine temp. Let's make sure it's still functioning. So there we go. As you can see, the trans cooler is warming up because of the engine radiator behind it. Highest is uh, 135, that's going to be the radiator. 
So let's see when this bad boy opens up. Trans tank currently showing 154. When checking on the fluid for the GM fill procedure, they're calling for 158 degrees is where you want to be. So we're almost at that temperature. So technically, this thermostatic bypass valve could open up anywhere from 154 to uh, 194. Not totally sure, but we'll see when, when it starts flowing through. This temperature will climb quite a bit. stalled at 169 degrees and there we go 176 is what that's showing see how my hand is now cooler so by 169 that has completely opened up definitely not the 194 that I expected so currently we're showing 167 right there it's probably not visible in the camera and I totally get that but I can see right here, 160, 159, 158, 157, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this valve is completely open. Trans temp on the dash is showing 171, but we can see this rapidly dropping. Touching the cooler is definitely hot. So I can tell that that has opened up on that flow. So the bypass valve has opened and these temperatures are dropping. So we'll have to check back on that. Still showing 172 on the trans temp on the dash. 127, see so yeah, that's helping read the 126. So it's definitely dropping, it's flowing through. So in the, anywhere from the 160 to 170, area was where it dropped down but it definitely stalled out on the dash that's really cool to see so now is the trans temperature that we're seeing on the dash actual to what we're seeing on uh, what the pan is let's go down to the pan actually now that we've seen this and let's see what the pan temperature is and there's our trans pan we're showing what 82 degrees 81 degrees Let's go to the bypass valve. That's the bypass valve right there. This end 167 degrees right there and on this end 113 132 that's a cool line coming in right there this is 171 degrees this is our Engine oil pan. Oil filter. See it's much hotter at top. 10L80 transmission here. Warm fluid is exiting out of the transmission and going into the bypass valve. This is a thermal bypass valve, so it only opens up when it reaches a certain temperature. Until then, it flows back through and goes into this cooler which actually has engine coolant flowing through it and then it'll go back into the transmission that's our return side so with the once it reaches temperature this valve will actually open up and it'll allow fluid to go through there and it is not unregulated it actually it's small holes in there and it has to work through that bypass valve itself so it flows through there at a low rate cools down goes back in and then it goes back into the return now with PPE bypass valve installed, we can have flow going through here and it automatically goes right into our cooler, immediately cooling and keeping temperatures in control. That is a, a larger hole 
flows through much better than having to deal with the valve that's in place. So it flows straight through, cools down, goes back in through here, and then returns. This is still operable as this will help to get the temperature up to temp inside the transmission itself, which is an added bonus because you do want the transmission fluid at a certain temperature, but you don't want it overheating. And this whole system right here is going to allow you to operate at a nice temperature. This is my drawing of the LM2. I don't have an LM2 in front of me, so I'm not able to look at it and verify it, but based off of pictures that I have in other videos that I've taken, this is how the system looks to operate. And it's very different from the LZ0, and it just goes to show that there are numerous changes in the LZ0 that we really didn't even know about. But LM2 here. All right, so you only have two lines on the little block for the, for the lines itself. So pressure out. It's going to go into the bypass valve, which is going to stay close until it reaches temperature, and it's going to flow back into the cooler where it's going to go return right there. Now, when the valve opens, then this opens up this flow of, through the cooler. It's going to cool down, and it's going to go back into the va bypass valve and flow back into this cooler and then back into the transmission pan itself. From trans, see the T? Transmission that way on the bottom to cooler, but there's a valve inside there. So it's going to flow back up to the trans and back that way. See how it flows straight through? It's because that's the return is supposed to be the cooler returning back through there. So when the valve opens, that's when it goes through to the cooler out that direction. Thirty-three is what's showing on the dash for the trans temp. I'm gonna grab this, swing it over there. One twenty-eight is where it's entering. One thirteen, one eleven is where it's exiting. All right. So what we know from this is hot side is the passenger side, cool side. Is the driver's side. Oh, so let's do this. This is better. I'll try to get it right in the 115, 113.9. Have it in the engine bay. gotten it up to 126 I've been driving for a little bit I idled for a while well, look, one aggressive pull shifts are nice temperatures definitely down that is nice right there this is my engine oil temp and we're doing a small climb right now it's a very small grade uh, we are back in the garage and uh, 122 is what I'm showing. I got up to 126 while uh, driving. Now I didn't go sit in any traffic or anything. There's our regular temps right there. Engine cooling temp at 212, engine oil temp at 205. 122, that is a drastic difference, about 75 degree difference right there. Let's discuss it.